As a free man, I take pride in the words, it being I extruded. To start out, let's create a brush and I'll go to File, New. I want this to be, let's say 700 by 700 at 72 DPI and I'll hit Create. Now I want to go to my artistic text tool, find the center of the screen right about there. I'm a little bit off, but it's okay. And I'm going to hit this button to center it and I'll double click this drop down so we can see what we're typing. So we want flow. It looks a little jagged around the edges. You can press control one if you got that and it'll zoom to a hundred percent. And uh, yeah, so I just clicked my arrow tool and I'm going to click a corner and drag it out while holding down control to uh, constrain things and uh, let's align this horizontally and okay so that's good I'm gonna select this and change the font to uh, this font here I think it's free from defont.com Aristotelica and I want to make sure it's really close to the edge but not quite hitting the edge uh, then the next thing is we select it I'll go to my gradient tool and this gradient I want to be elliptical and I'll pick some colors for it some colors that'll really stand out brightly and work together I just kind of know that these two colors are pretty pretty good one to use uh, and uh, for this situation what I want is to have each color to have a variety each letter to have a variety of colors is what I should say and so this W has a pink and has the blue so it has a variety but this F is pretty much all that pink color so first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that this is turned off this is unchecked so that when I click and drag this top part I could squash the gradient down and I'll move it I could click this end to rotate it maybe stretch it out a bit okay now we're starting to get a, a little bit better look here. So the, the F has a fair amount of two colors and the, the L, O, the W is, maybe the W is a little bit uh, too washed out. Okay, I think I'll, I'll, go, with, I'll go with this here. So uh, what I wanna do is export this, but first I wanna go to document and show transparent background and uh, I want to export this as a PNG, but I also want to keep this file open because I'm going to reuse it later on. And uh, so go to File, Export. Make sure you got this as a PNG. And you click Export. And uh, so I've already tried this a couple times. This will be our brush number three. And we got what we need for now and I'll press control N to use a shortcut this time to create a new document and 1920 by 1080 72 DPI let's create it and uh, now I want to get my brushes window but I want to see it a little bit more clearly so I click and drag that tab and um, you can create a new category I've got I've got a custom brush and I've got this empty one here with nothing in it but it's really simple just click this button create new category and now I have brushes number two so once you got your category then you can go to new image brush by clicking that little hamburger menu there's there's two little menu buttons it's not this bigger one it's a little one on top that I clicked on and then you just select your PNG that you made and um, click your brush and now you could see it it's not what we want quite yet but just note that I've got stabilizer turned on and I'm using this window mode and I have the settings all the way on, on top this gives me uh, the smoothest results so now let's double click the actual brush to get to its settings and I'll change the size just to something that seems like it, it um, works right I think we want maybe a little bit bigger there is a keyboard shortcut if I could remember uh, if you want to just scale your brush in the view you could use the brackets if you want but control alt right click left click 
and then you could change your brush size that way. And it's nice. It's giving you a little bit of a preview. Uh, okay. So I think that works. And um, now I just need to uh, change the spacing. But before I change the spacing, because that once I once I bring the spacing down, everything is just going to get a little bit slower. Um, so before I bring it too far down, I'll just bring it something like that. What I want to do is look at the dynamics, and I want to I want to change the luminosity jitter. So I can set this to a pen pressure if you have a drawing tablet. But if not, you could still, let's move this so you can see everything. You could still get some decent results if you set this to direction. And now you're going to get text fading to white and text fading to black. I just want the white. So I click on this little graph here and I bring this up to the middle. And now you can see we got a little different look here where it starts out white. And as the direction changes, as long as I don't go past horizontal, like here, it's not going to turn white again. So uh, we're, we're getting close to some, some good results. The, uh, the next thing I want to do is adjust the size jitter. And I'm going to set that to direction also. And I'll say, okay, it's going from, from big to small. And I don't want that. I want the opposite of that. So I click on its graph. I'll select this one and I'll just flip these. So this one is on top. This one is on the bottom. I'll do a little test here to see how it looks. Okay, so that's close to what I want. And I'll just go back to general and turn my spacing down to its lowest, which is 1%. And I'll cut that out and I'll start. And you got to note that first of all, you want to make sure that your stabilizer is on or else it'll just be looking wobbly. So I just note my direction. If, if I'm going this way and even rotating here, it looks good. But when I start to go up, you're going to get that. So you want to avoid that unless you like that. So I know that I have to start at at least a slightly upwards and to the right angle and draw this around like so. If I start to go back, it's gonna get smaller, but it's still kind of an interesting look. So that's that's the result that you get. So let's, let's get this out of the way because I think we're done for now. And we can take a better look at our canvas. So I'll just kind of start over here and you could do whatever you want. You could get it really wavy and just make sure we don't go past horizontal. Okay, so now we've got some interesting wavy extruded text and uh, I just wanna grab this original and uh, do a control A, control C. Also making sure you're on, on the right layer, control C and uh, come over here and paste control V. So, now we've got the text in here and uh, it's it's still live text. So we can make adjustments to the size. And I just wanna get this kind of mashed up as best I can. I think that's good. Press control one if you want to um, zoom into 100%. And uh, yeah, so now we could kind of see the text but it'll look a little bit better if we put an outline around it so I can go to effects. Let's pop this window out here. Uh, so we see our effects, we see our layers, we're on the right layer. Let's go to outline. Let's click its cog wheel and um, increase the radius. We could go with the black, that doesn't look half bad or uh, we could set this to um, gradient and change the angle and change the color. Click that one, something like that. We could even try to change this color. I think it looks pretty good at, as white. It f helps fade it to the background also, uh, but we can choose a color or we could use our eyedropper tool and um, click and drag that eyedropper onto a color 
and then we click the swatch that we picked here and um, yeah so I think it's a little too dark maybe brighten it up a bit and that's how we can create this extruded flowy kind of text look and uh, if you have a white background it helps and it fades in nicely uh, if we had a dark background I could just reverse my luminosity so it goes from dark to this color text.